I think the thing that we want people to know is that we're highly, we're highly skilled people. Uh, we're well trained. We get a lot of experience in Regina. Um, I really do, I truly believe we're the best paramedics on earth when it comes to treating patients. And, uh, and we love our job and we're happy to do it. My name is Shannon Hines. I'm an advanced care paramedic and a field trainer with Regina EMS. And I've been doing this job for a little over eight years now. And uh, I guess I would have to echo Kate. Um, the most rewarding part of my job is just knowing that uh, almost every day I, I help someone. Right. Hi. Um, I'm Kate Giesinger. I'm an emergency medical technician with Regina Capel Health Region, EMS, and have been so for about, uh, well, I've been in EMS for 31 years, been with the health district about 27 now. I think probably the biggest misconception is that we, uh, we scoop and run. You know, it's almost like the old Flintstones episodes where they used to roll up and the two guys would just throw the person in the back and they'd both get in the front and drive away. Um, and that's not the case. I mean, Kate said earlier, uh, we've got a pretty extensive scope of practice nowadays and uh, we bring your emergency room right to your front door. Um, it wasn't always like that but it is now and uh, I think people don't really realize what we can do and what our potential is. Yeah, they're quite often they'll they'll uh, stop us while we're trying to, to do our job on a call and they'll just just go just take them to the hospital you're here to take them so take them and but there are certain steps that we have to proceed with prior to departing to the hospital and, and you know if we don't we certainly bear the grief of it but the patient uh, suffers the most detriment really if if we don't do our jobs and to the best of our abilities in a timely fashion they suffer so moving the emergency room into their their living room it just expedites everything I'm Brendan Eisner uh, been with RQHR for what a year and a half I guess and I'm a primary care paramedic I'm Darren Tanzel. I'm uh, ACP, advanced care paramedic, uh, for 15 years with Regina Coppel Health Region EMS. Brennan and I have only, we've probably worked here like, what, five times yeah, maybe? Probably. Not very much. I don't like him very much. He's still my teammate though. Yeah, but he's my teammate and I gotta, I gotta back him up. No, we get along really good. Um, if you have a, a partner that you get along with, it makes your job so much easier. And uh, Brennan and I, we get along pretty good. Uh, he listens good, so. That's why we get along good, Real good right? listener. <laughs> yeah. Real good. Yeah. 1621 Albert Street, 161 oh. Albert, Regina Center Crossing. 1621 Albert, go to. Well, we got dispatched to Regina Center Crossing. We haven't got an update yet. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll get you going in their proper direction. And so, and then once they find out what's happening, they'll update us. But they're going to have to update us pretty quick here because we're almost there. So. Medic 8, 1070, you have a chief complaint. Go in here. It's kind of a nice reward, if you will, um, to see a kid come around from being very sick and, and just play it out to, to having a little more energy um, and, and, wow. and looking at mom and being able to smile and, and playing with their teddy bear. A cute little two-year-old girl had uh, has an asthma There's history. Uh, Mom took her to the to the doctor today. Um, doctor gave her some Ventolin, which is the mask mm -hmm. we saw nebulized uh, some medicine for her. Um, her oxygen saturation didn't really improve with that, so called us and uh, we just continued the the neb and uh, and then reassessed her after the neb. Sat still not coming up, so we left her on the oxygen after that. And uh, she's fine. Um, oxygen level is 100% with a mask, and so they'll reassess again today at the emergency, and maybe we can check on her later and see how she's doing. But she's okay. So. Yes, I had to put myself in harm's way many, many times. Unfortunately, you're there to serve a purpose, to help, and you don't think about the consequences necessarily to yourself. Sometimes you just you just act. The only thing that maybe gets us sometimes is, you know, rush hour traffic, everything's blocked up, we need to get to a call and there's absolutely no way to get through. And that's just the way it is. Does this hurt down know. here at all? A little, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, I don't mean to cause you any more discomfort. Feel a little poking your arm, you're okay. It's a little nice and still for me. 
slow breathing, slow breathing, okay? Nice and easy, okay? Nice, easy breaths, okay? You gotta slow it down. So we're good for the pass score then? Uh, sudden onset of right-sided back pain radiating down into his groin. Uh, he's got a history of renal colic. Uh, states today feels uh, the same, just much worse. Uh, pain at a 10 out of 10 on our arrival. Uh, we've gone ahead with five milligrams of morphine, 50 of gravel. He's resting comfortably at this time. All of his vitals are good and we'll see you in five. Now the advice I would seriously give to somebody if they were aspiring to get into this career was, first and foremost, Calling three. you have to care. Negative. And if you don't care, don't even think about getting into this. There's a lot of people that are getting into it because they get to wear a flashy uniform and they get to drive fast and they carry a radio and they look cool. It's not about being cool or looking cool. It's not about playing a role. It's about making a difference and being dedicated. Yeah, it's not even like I get stressed about um I'll give you an example, like I, uh, I went to a call for a, for a young, I think maybe two years old, um, in kind of a sketchy neighborhood, and this poor kid was dehydrated and unwell, pale, lethargic, and um, you know, it, it's, it killed me that the parents didn't care. And, I, and when I say it didn't care, if it was my if it was my child that was like that, I'd just about be in a panic. You know, when it's your kid, it's it's different, right? They didn't care. They just sat. They they have finally called after four days of this kid being like this, and uh, they just sat. And, and when I was when I handled the, the, they had no answers for any questions. Um, they were probably drunk, and I felt. You know, and I just thought, how many kids are like this in this city? And it's kind of the social aspect that gets me. Um, you know, gory things don't really get me. They never have, but uh, it's always the social aspect that gets me. And this poor kid, you know, I, uh, I gave him a teddy bear from the back of the ambulance and, and I think that was the first gift he'd been given in a long time. So that's the kind of stuff that sticks with me. Um, I don't tend to remember the gory stuff anymore. No. And to me, that's almost a medical thing. Gory stuff is, is just, um, it's, it's, it doesn't affect me, but it's always the, it's always the kids or, or situations like that that kind of get to me. You get into the hospital and then you can be so busy during the rest of the day that you never get to, you always kind of try to go check up or, or see how they're doing or see what that diagnosis really was. You go home and, and you wonder what happened and you, you, just, you never get that answer and that's probably the toughest part, I guess, for me. I'd have to say that uh, the reward of my job isn't paycheck or any fame or fortune by any means, but just knowing that I've made a difference in people's lives. That's my true reward. Uh, it's lunchtime. Big old camera in your face. I'm not, I'm not going to eat this banana with the camera on me because it's impossible to cool eating banana. So I'm just going to sit here like this and wait until he stops. I'm not rolling, so go ahead. What You're lying. I, what if I go no, brown? Uh, no. <laughs> but it's got to be three points. 